Good day team, welcome back. I'm Matt and I've made a mistake again. This is a rather nice Sutton high speed steel spiral tap. Um, well, it was a rather nice Sutton high speed steel spiral tap. Sadly, part of it's in there, part of it is across the rest of my workshop, and then there's the, uh, the stub of it here in my hand. Um, it's pretty deep in there, but there's not much of the tap left. So, what I'm hoping I can do is actually just remove it myself. I'm sick of paying a lot of money to get these things removed. So we're going to have a crack today at a broken tap removal. So as this tap's made of high-speed steel, uh, we can't use any kind of other high-speed steel to get it out because they're both the same hardness. We need to find something harder than high-speed steel um, in order to effectively cut it. So our weapon of choice in this tap removal game is going to be these. These are carbide burrs. Um, carbide is harder than high-speed steel. It gets marginal there on the fringes where there's a bit of overlap. But in general, carbide is significantly harder than high-speed steel. We've got it in a rotary tool, Dremel knockoff, if you will. And it's using like a 2.5 millimeter um, ball nose burr down here that you can see. Um, the trick is to have a steady hand. I don't have one of them. Hold it in the hole and just you know, gently burr away uh, the broken tap. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. That was mildly anticlimactic, it just broke a whole chunk off. Alright, so this is a spiral tap and it seems to be um, breaking significant chunks off as we're going through with the grinder. It's working far better than I thought it would, so let's just uh, keep making that progress. Alright, so we're making progress. The uh, burr still seems to be pretty sharp, so that's good. A uh, couple of lessons out of it so far is crank the Dremel up to its maximum speed. I was running way too slow before. Uh, and also, two hands for beginners, low feed. So lots and lots of RPM. Two hands to kind of stabilize it. I'm literally doing this so I can brace my elbows on the part and just go down and then move around a little bit. And then lots and lots of RPM. Just keep going. So one of these holes here is not like the other. I'll give you a hint, it's this one right here. I got the tap out. It took uh, probably three or four hours spread over a couple of days. It was mind numbing and it sucked. And I broke a couple of bits out of it. Uh, and I've also embiggened the hole uh, significantly more than what it should be. So there's still some threads kind of in there you can kind of you know, feel. Uh, might have heard that, I don't know. But what I need to do now is thread repair. Uh, so there's a couple ways I can do it. I can weld in there, and I can fill it up, and I can re-drill it, and I can go from there. Or I can put a helicoil in, uh, and you know what? I'm going to put a helicoil in. I'm going to use the rail here. I'm going to reposition it there. I'm going to bolt it down very loosely. And now I'm going to align it so that it's all up on one side, and then pull back a little bit. So. It's centered at each end. So now I'm going to use this rail as a drill guide. The hole in here is, I think, 6.5 millimeters in diameter. The drill I've got for a helicoil is 6.2 millimeters in diameter. This one here. And it means it will have a little bit of slack in there, but far better than trying to do it by handing out of the way. And if this whole process fails, then the good news is. I can just weld it. A 
I'd really like some kind of arm that I can get this camera over the top here and look straight down. Yeah, that's a that's a completed mill project. I wonder if I can show you this. If you look down there, you can see there's like a step at the bottom of the hole. That's kind of uh, where the drill's gone down. And if you look at the edge of it, it seems to be pretty well centered around the whole hole. Centered around the whole hole. Um, so that means that the new hole, which I'm going to tap in a second, is fairly well aligned to the old hole. So that means it should be pretty concentric and it's actually in the right spot. That makes me happy. I know this is a terrible idea, but I'm going to power tap this. One, to piss Gilly off. And two, because it's probably the best way to get it straight. Noting that uh, the hole is a little bit out of square or out of circular at the top. And now, I can hand tap. One of the things I've always found interesting is in hot rod steel you get the hard spots where things kind of bind up a little bit and then release. So much more than in uh, other materials. All right, went out the bottom of that hole. So, what's next? Install a helicoil. So this helicoil is going to be installed a couple of mil below the surface because this whole top is going to be decked off by a milling machine. And I don't really want them to take the, you know, the stainless steel wire, either one, chip a cutter or a tooth, or two, you know, mill it off and have less there. I can always replace it later, but I'd prefer not to. That's when it gets done. Done in one. One and done. Double thread. There we go, we're started. That M6 block goes in nicely. So to break that tail, we do that little tang that you can see in there. Let's put an arrow there to gesture. We line up a, uh, a punch with it, we give it a sharp tap, and then Bob's your uncle. Tail's gone. Hey, look at that. That fits in really nicely. I have successfully repaired this thread. Yeah, chalk that up as a win to me. Alright, so we've now repaired the, the hole, we've validated it, everything fits together, it's, it's all good. Next step will be once this actually gets installed in the main casting in the mill and then machine down and the final thing goes together and I hope it all works. For the first question that we've got though is, did it work? Well one, yeah clearly, you saw me you know, remove the tap, re-drill, re-tap the hole, verify that it all fit together so it worked. The second question is probably more pertinent and more uh, useful is, um, was it worth it? And I'm going to say yes, but with a caveat. For those of you that don't know, I live in Queensland, Australia. Um, when I broke this, we actually just entered our uh, lockdown in August of 2021. Uh, and that really quashed my plans to take this down to the local engineering place. And by local, I mean they're about a 40 minute drive away uh, and get them to burn it out with a die sinker. So because I couldn't physically get to somewhere where they could remove this, and I successfully removed it, yeah, it was worth it. In general, and if I had that access to being able to get somewhere to remove it, it wasn't worth it at all. I've destroyed these two punches here. Uh, what you didn't actually see me do uh, on the video is grind away at the tap, and then as there was bits sticking up, I'd tap them out and break them off with the, with the punch. That was significantly faster than trying to grind away all of it. However, it's destroyed the punches if we... You can see at the end of that one there, it's gone. And same over here with this one here. It's uh, yeah, much, much smaller. If we can steal from AVE and put some expletives in there. Um, yeah, so I destroyed the two punches. I went through two carbide burrs that snapped because they hit the hole at slightly the wrong angle and just went like that. I blunted 
two diamond burrs. Uh, these are only cheap out of the pack, but still, um, you know, I had two more diamond burrs, now I don't have. And this one really bugs me. I snapped a pick. That's a straight pick. That actually served me well. That got the final part of the tap out, so go you. This one here was like a 45 degree pick, so it went out that way, then came back like that. Uh, probably sticking like that there, um, which was really good for getting stuff out initially. And it got caught and just leverage and again, off she went. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tools that I have broken, chasing after one tool that I broke in the first place. Over a three or four hour period, it wasn't worth it. If I had any other option, that probably would have been a better way to do it. But I've tried it, I've proved for myself it can be done. I've shown you guys it can be done. Uh, I've shown you the uh, the massacre of a hole that turns out after it, and then what you can do to repair that hole. Um, and you know what? If you need to do it in a pinch, go for it. But it takes a while, and it's going to destroy some tools. All right, team. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I certainly uh, yeah, got a little bit out of it. Um, still really want to buy that EDM die sinker. Um, but if you like my video, please consider you know, dropping a like down below and subscribing and if I've done something completely stupid and I've done something really wrong, please just jump in the comments and tell me because I'm more than happy to revisit this whole it's not worth the thing if someone can tell me that it is. Other than that, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for tuning in.